Hi, I'm Laura Candler from Teaching Resources, and I want to share with you a fun and easy way that you can incorporate digital technology into your character trait studies. What we're going to do today is create a character word cloud, and I'm going to walk you through the entire process to show you just how easy it is. This is an example that you're looking at right now, or actually two examples of what a word cloud is. A word cloud is just a, an artistic arrangement of words in which the size of the word is related to the uh, number of times that the word appears in a block of text. And if that sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry about it because I'm going to show you exactly how to create these. Um, these two examples were created, actually it's the same example, one in black and white and one in color, uh, created that were based on the character of Jack and Jack and the Beanstalk. So let me start off by showing you where you can find the directions and the printable that you'll need to do this activity. If you um, open up your browser and go to uh, my webpage, which is lauracandler.com, um, you can find this, this free activity there. If you'll go across the top of the page to the word strategies and click on literacy strategies, scroll down if you need to and click on the word reading aloud and you'll find this activity in the reading aloud section of my website. I decided to put it there because um, using a character from a read aloud book is a great way to get started with this activity in your classroom. If you'll scroll down to the section that says read aloud activities and strategies. You'll see create a character word cloud as the first choice. And if you click right here, the directions open up. Actually, that was the second page. The first page looks like this, create a character word cloud, and it has the directions here. And then the second page is the printable you can use with your students, or you can simply display it um, for your students um, and let them use a piece of paper to do the next step of the activity. Now, let me exit out of this activity, and actually I'll go back to my uh, web page, and pull up an example that I have already completed to make this real easy and simple. So what you're going to do with this activity is have your students choose eight character traits based on whatever character that you're featuring in the word cloud. And then they're going to rate each character trait. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. They're going to rate each character trait from 1 to 10 based on how closely that character or trait describes the character. Now, it's important to uh, choose a variety of traits. You don't want to choose all 9s and 10s because then your word cloud is not going to look very interesting, and you'll see why in just a minute. I found that it works best to rate the character traits between 4 and 10. Okay. Um, once you've completed the ratings, the next thing to do is to open a Word document. So let me open uh, a Word document, and you're going to start by typing in the character traits the number of times that you rated it. So I started with friendly, so I will type the word friendly, and I want to type it seven times because I gave it a rating of seven. So one way that you can do that, if your students know how to copy and paste, is to just highlight the word, right-click on it, copy it, and then just paste it seven times. It doesn't matter whether the list of words goes across the page or down the page. Let's see if I've got seven. No, that's just six. And then you go to the next word. So the next word on my list was foolish, so I would type that, and I would type it uh, five times because I rated it a five. Now I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me type so I actually prepared a list ahead of time. In this case I just did it in one long column and it doesn't matter whether the words are capitalized, if there's extra spaces, um, none of that's going to matter in the final product. So what I want to do is I want to highlight my entire list and copy it. For me that's right click and copy. And then I'm going to go to a uh, website that's used for generating word clouds. Luckily, there's a number of them that are free. The first one I want to introduce to you is ABCYA, which I think is abcya.com. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page and click on word clouds, you'll see um, a little box open up. And all you do is right click and paste in the box your listing of words. Then you click your arrow and you already have a word cloud just like that. Now the kids can uh, click this randomize button and see different arrangements 
or if they want to uh, choose a particular font, they can scroll down and try out the different fonts. They can try different colors. And if you want them to, uh, if you want them to print it, you probably want them to choose um, black on white. And then there are some different layout options that they can play with. So a good thing, this is a good program to start out with um, younger kids because there aren't too many options. And also it's very easy if you look down here in the corner, you can save it quite easily and you can print quite easily using these buttons. Now I will say if you click this new button, it's going to erase all of your words and you have to start over. And that's a good reason to have the words um, already typed in a word processing program because if the kids accidentally lose all their words, they're going to be frustrated if they have to type it over. So this is a good place to start, but older kids might enjoy using the program called Wordle, and that's wordle.net, not wordle.com, wordle.net. I will um, just mention to you that this front page is very safe, um, but I would not let my students go into the gallery and look around because this is a public website and there are some quite interesting uh, wordles that have been created and wordles I'm not sure that you want your kids looking at. So we're going to stay on this page or go to create your own. So uh, all we need to do is look at this section where it says paste in a bunch of text. Right click, paste it in, and click go. Don't worry about any of the um, parts of the bottom of the page right now. You can explore that later. And once again, you have your uh, Wordle pop-up or your Word Cloud pop-up. So um, the easiest thing to do is find the Randomize button, which is down at the bottom on this site, and just try randomizing and looking at some of the options. Then you can um, uh, change other options. One thing that I did want to point out, um, since we don't really want the kids going into these areas up here, if you look down here in the lower left corner, there's a thing that says open in window. And if you have the kids open it in a window and then uh, open it wide open, it fills up the screen and it keeps them in the safe area of the site. And if you look over here in the upper left corner, you'll see all of your options. So you can just click to change the colors. Once again, you can do uh, black on white. You've got a lot of options for the layout, any which way. Um, I like usually half and half seems to come up with an interesting arrangement. And then you can look at um, all kinds of different fonts that can be used. And uh, each time you choose a new font, um, it comes up with another arrangement as well. Now suppose I like this font, but I don't really like the layout. I can click re-lay out with current settings and it keeps the same colors and the same fonts. Now when I find something that I actually like and I want to keep, all right, let's say I want to keep this particular layout. Now the next thing is I want to uh, maybe save it. I would not have the students use this option of saving to the public gallery because then that puts them in the public gallery looking around where we said we really don't want them to be. You can come over to the lower left corner and have them click the print button, but suppose you want to save it to use in a PowerPoint or somewhere else. To do that, you're going to use, need to use another um, tool on your computer. Um, there's a print screen option that you can use to save the screen as an image file, or you may have some other um, add-on tool. I happen to have something called a snipping tool and it just says drag the cursor around the area you want to capture. So I start way up in the upper corner and I just drag a box around that whole um, clump of text. And what happens is I now have it saved. If you look up here, it's now in the snipping tool. It's not in the Java program that was used for Wordle. And then I can click the save button here and I can rename it and I can save it where I want it to be able to use it um, later. So you may have to play around with this. This is one of the reasons I suggest that you try to do it on your own before you do it with kids because there are little details and little bugs that you want to work out um, before your students start on this. But um, once you figure it out, it's, it's quite easy and it's a lot of fun. Now, if you want to uh, do a little more with this activity, maybe you're thinking, well, that's fun, but I'm not sure how educational it is. You can certainly uh, extend the activity in many ways. One way that you can extend it is to have students write a paragraph 
um, justifying or explaining their different character trait choices and, um, and giving details from the story, explaining why they said that Jack was brave or greedy or clever or whatever. Um, it could certainly be turned into a project and a class presentation. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it and great teachers can figure out what to do. Sometimes it's the technology that's a little bit of a problem, so I wanted to walk people through this and see just how easy it is. For more activities that you can do with your students, I invite you to visit my website. Once again, I'll scroll to the top here. It's lauracandler.com, and I'm always adding new activities to my online file cabinet. If you'd like to receive updates when I send out those new activities, you can click in this box here where it says sign up for Candler's Classroom Connections and um, sign up with your email address. I send out weekly emails with information, activities, ideas for your classroom. So I hope you and your students enjoy creating word clouds, character word clouds.